Hey everybody and welcome to part three of our Nina adventure. So in parts one and two we've looked at now how to navigate through Nina as a system and we've looked at how to connect all of our equipment to it. So in this video we're going to look at the settings and also how we can customise the imaging tab so to suit your own personal needs. Now I will say the settings, I'm not going to go through why I have the settings that I do, uh, that will come in some later videos around autofocus and things like that. But at the moment this is to give you a start, so if they work for me, there's a good chance they'll work for you too. Or a release will be close enough for you to then adjust those settings slightly until they do work perfectly for you. So let's jump into Nina and pick up from where we left off. Okay, so as you can see, all of our equipment is connected. Uh, those of you who are eagle-eyed from the last video will notice I have now downloaded the Pegasus Astro driver. So I am able to connect my power box to Nina as well now. But other than that, as you can see by all the little power symbols, we have our camera, filter wheel, focuser, uh, mount, guiding, and my Pegasus Astro connected, along with the weather as well. Um, and today is, of course, cloudy, because, well, it's the UK. What do you expect? So let's have a quick look at the options tabs. So there are four key ones. There's general, equipment, imaging, and plate solving. And we're just going to go through these one at a time to give you a quick overview of what's in there and where you can find the different settings. The general tab is probably the easiest. Um, one of the key ones is down the bottom here. This is your location and there are ways of pinpointing your location within Nina as well. But do just every now and again check this is correct. I often find for some reason the minus falls out of my latitude um, and it means that when my uh, plate solving is happening it's not all that accurate and when it's trying to slew my mount thinks it's somewhere else so the position it points to is relative to that position in the UK not where I actually am. Now obviously easting 0.61 and westing 0.61 so there's only probably 100 miles between those but if your, your longitude was say 23 versus minus 23 it's going to think you're half a continent out so it will make a big difference so just every now and again just check that you have got the right latitude and longitude in there. The only other real sort of key to this one is the colour schemes. Uh, there are a number of different colour schemes that you can pick. Uh, the one I use during the day is the one you can see which is, is light. However, when it comes to being outside at night time with my laptop for example, I tend to switch, switch to Persian. It's just generally darker, emits less light from the screen which means it's less likely to have an impact on my imaging if I happen to be out not remote desktop, uh, desktoping to this particular laptop. So overall, I'll keep it on light for this. Again, you, you can pick various colour schemes and you can do pretty much what you like with it. Uh, it's all a bit of fun in trying it, but I, I tend to find the standard ones work just fine. Equipment is where most of the settings are going to be. So the camera, it picks that up automatically. As, it, as we already know, it's connected to my QHY268M. So it knows the pixel size, it knows the bit depth. Uh, and the other ones though, I have enable bit scaling off Bold mode is native, the raw converter is DC raw, and my camera timeout is 60, and that's 60 seconds. So for example, if there was any communication error between Nina and the camera, if Nina is say waiting for the camera to deliver an image, and it just doesn't happen, it, Nina will time it out after 60 seconds and give you an error message in the bottom right hand corner to let you know there's been a timeout and there is an issue, so you can look into it. It just means that you're not stuck. Um, you know, with, with something crashed between two systems and it taking you an age to try and find the, the, the root cause of that. So it will just sort of time it out after a short brief period. In terms of the telescope, um, no sync I turn off. Uh, so no sync is after you do a plate solving, it won't sync its position. Um, I, don't, I, I can't think of a huge amount of times where that would be a, a, a something you would want to do. Um, so I always just keep that turned off. And obviously I then give everything a name, so mine is the Explore Scientific ED102 and it's the carbon fibre model. My focal length is 714 mm because I don't have a reducer on it at the moment, so therefore my focal ratio is f7. And settle time after slew, obviously again it's, it's a number of seconds, so this is after taking a slewing activity, before it will do anything else like taking an image, it will wait 10 seconds just to make sure the mount is completely steady. So that's something worth having, especially if you're plate solving. Um, the last thing you want is it to still be moving while it tries to take the plate solving image. Otherwise your stars tend to come out as streaks and then some plate solving software just can't then solve that. So you actually end up just wasting time uh, during that session. So those 10 seconds are probably quite useful. Um, 
For the focuser, uh, I don't have filter wheel offset set yet. Uh, I will do a video on that because I'm actually going to do it for my filters. Mine's new enough that I haven't calculated them yet, so I will share that as I do that. My autofocus step size is 40, so that's the number of steps it takes between each image in an autofocus routine. Um, and the default exposure time is 10 and an initial offset steps at 4. So into the advanced settings here, so my autofocus method, method is the star, uh, half frequency rate. So that is uh, my main way of doing it. It is, I don't want it to disable guiding when it's doing it, there's no need to disable guiding whilst it's doing auto focusing, so I have that off. Your curve line fitting, there are a number of options that you can pick. I have found that trends and parabolic works best for me. Now, I don't have a focus or settler time, my focus doesn't, doesn't need the settle time. Auto focus, it'll make two attempts to do auto focus. Uh, number of frames per point is one. Use brightness n stars, zero. Inner crop ratio, one. Outer crop ratio, one. And again, you can see the rest of them so there. Um, and the other thing that I will do here, I'm going to change this in a second, is to there are two different ways of doing autofocus, but I have found the best way to be uh, the absolute method with the backlash in out. Uh, I have it's basically just needs to be set more than the backlash for your focuser. Now, I will cover that in out in uh, an autofocusing video, but at the moment I have my backlash in set at 60 and my out at zero. So that's the key ones there. For weather, uh, I have Fahrenheit off because we don't work in Fahrenheit over here. I don't want to work in Imperial units. Uh, I'm, I'm not in America, so we, we, we do things slightly differently over here, uh, along with the rest of the world. Um, and also you'll need an Open Weather Map API key. So they are free, but you do need to sign up for it. So you can just simply go to openweathermap.org API. will take you to this page and you can subscribe to their current weather data. That will give you an API key and that is what you need to paste into here. Uh, we looked at the filters yesterday, but this is where you can name your filters, so you can go into it and replace the name in there so that your filter is in the right order for your filter wheel. And then within the guider settings, obviously that's where you let it know where it can find PHD2. Uh, most of this then fills out itself for the ports, but my, my dither pixels I have set to 10. I don't want it only to do it in, in right ascension. Uh, the, the pixel tolerance, 1.5, Minimum settle timing and 10 seconds. Settle timeout, so if it's not getting a, a response to that, it's 40 seconds. Uh, direct guide duration two, uh, and guiding start retry up orders off, and guiding start timeout 60 seconds. So that is the main uh, settings that you'll need to do in that tab. In the imaging tab, obviously it'll save images as FITS files, and here is how you can have your file name saved. So if you look at this, it, it gives you all the different things you can have as part of your file name. So in the example here, I've got all these things, so my, it'll tell me it, at the moment it is uh, a light frame of M33, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, it, it's got a luminance filter, so that's how I know what filter is in there, and things like that. So it gives you all the information that you want in your file name. So again, that is a complete preference as to what order you would like those to come up in but so you, you could just play around with those and it is as simple as just putting, well so it's dollar dollar, the, the wording that's down here, dollar dollar and then an underscore um, between them as well. So it just means that you get that nice file uh, name that you want to have. The Meridian Flip is pretty good in Nina. I haven't had it fail to date. Um, I do have one issue with Nina around the Meridian which I'll come into in a second. So Meridian Flip is enabled. It does it nine minutes after the Meridian. Uh, the use telescope side up here is off. So recenter after flip. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to recenter on my target. Again, the scope settle time after the flip. That's like after a slew, so that's 10 seconds. Pause before meridian, I have no minutes. Um, and auto focus after flip, I have us on. So all of those will do during the meridian flip. The issue I've come up with with Nina is if you happen to go to a target within those nine minutes. So. If you slew to a target that has now technically passed the meridian but is within those nine minutes, Nina will go the wrong side of the pier and then won't do the meridian flip because the meridian has already passed so it's not aware that it's gone into the wrong space. So you do just need to be aware of that if you are uh, aiming to go to something that is almost dead on the meridian 
is probably worth waiting to 10 or 11 minutes after it's past the meridian to be sure that Nina won't have any issues. Uh, for the image options, uh, the auto stretch factor I have is 0.2, my black clipping at minus 2.8. Uh, I have annotate image off, you can always turn that on if you want to. Debayer image on, Debayer HFR on, unlink stretch on, star sensitivity is high, noise reduction as high. So that's my main uh, settings there. And ultimately that's about all you're going to need to know on that tab. Uh, the last one is about plate solving. So this is where you can put the details of the plate solver you want to use. So I have plate solve 2. So again, I've told it where PS2 is. And again, you get some basic filters, uh, basic settings even, around what you want to do. So my exposure time is 20 seconds. It just uses whatever the current filter is. Um, my pointy tolerance I have within half an arc minute. Rotation tolerance, one degree, I don't have a rotator, so that, that makes no odds whatsoever, it doesn't look at that. Number of attempts it makes is three, and delay between attempts is one minute. Um, so that's uh, as simple as that, and, and that tends to run perfectly well. So that's everything you need to know on the settings. The other thing I wanted to cover in this video very quickly is my imaging tab. So I have this set up in a very particular way, which I have looked at in a previous video, but it is ultimately my equipment down the left, my guiding along the bottom, information about my session on the right, and the image and a few other bits that I do in this middle bit. But it can take, it's a little bit tricky as to how you get all of these things into place. So I thought if I was just to kill all these off, I can show you how we get to that place that I got to, because once you've got the hang of this, it's a really, really easy thing to move around. So I'm just gonna close off all of these tabs that are uh, open so that we are just back to a completely blank screen and we will start from the beginning. There we go. Now as you can see along the top here are all lots of different options on the left and the right. Uh, the ones on the left are your equipment, the ones on the right are generally about your imaging session. We're going to click on the image tab which will open up our first window that we need to. So this is the window in which your image would normally appear. From there, you can start to add other bits around this. So for example, if I wanted to add my focuser, I could come up here and I could click on my focuser and it will add it as a separate tab down here. Now see, I don't want that as a tab. Uh, I want that to go in a different place. Um, the same with my guider. If I take the guiding, it will just put my guiding graph in a tab on its own. So to get those to move, you can just click and hold on them and take them out of that dock. It then gives you a number of options you can do. So you can put it to the left, you can put it to the right, top or bottom, uh, or you can link it within this window and go underneath it, so, which is what I want to do. So I want it to be with it underneath the imaging tab. So I can just put that to there. And now we can see my guiding, if I pull this down, it's like it was in the previous screen. It is at the bottom of my uh, imaging tab and then the focuser I can do the same thing but I want that to go to the left side of the screen so I can put it to the left and then I can move that in a bit it's a little bit wide for me so now I have my focuser back there from that I could also then click my filter wheel which again will bring up a new tab and I can take the filter wheel and I can drag it into this window and actually I want it in that window but above my focuser from that, I could then grab my camera, and again, the same thing, remove that from the dock. I want it to be within this section, and I want it to actually be above my filter wheel. So there you go, so I've now got a camera, filter wheel, focuser. If I move this one down a bit, it will make life a little bit easier. And then the last thing that I want to add to that is my telescope. So again, I want that above my camera. So I hold over there, release that, and it's now got my telescope in. And these you can just then just resize. You know, the, uh, the, the filter wheel really doesn't take a lot of space, but I, I always like just to make sure that there is enough room for all of things so you don't get the, the, the bars down the side. It means you can maximize the information that you're seeing. But again, you know, you can now see uh, that all a lot of information is turned on because I'm, I'm connected to my equipment. Um, but the only bit we're now missing is the bits on the right. So the first thing I like to put over there is the uh, HFR information. So again, I just click on that and my HFR history I put to the right hand side. So that goes there. 
I then above that have the stats. So I click on statistics and I want that above my HFR. And my HFR I can drag down because that always just takes up a little bit of space at the bottom and that's it. And the last thing I have there then is um, the, uh, where's it gone? Oh, I've found it now. That's oh, on this side, isn't it? It's my imaging one. So imaging now appears here. And again, that goes at the top over here. And this is the one that allows you to take individual exposures. So you know, I'm going to just shrink the height of that slightly. So again, this allows you to put your exposure time in. Um, it allows you to select the filter you want, what gain you want to take it out, a few other bits, and that would take an individual image. Um, I mean, if I was to literally just, just put this to, to three seconds and take an image, it's got the lens cap on. So you can see down here, it's now exposing and it should just give me a black image in a second. So yeah, there we go. It's just a, it's the equivalent of a dark frame, but that's where that now appears in the middle of the screen. Uh, I can also probably minimize that slightly. I don't need it quite so wide. Again, maximizes the amount of image that I can see. And the other thing I put inside that tab is my sequence. So if I click on sequence again it appears here. Now I want to put this one inside that so it's a tab. So if I hover over this middle bit and let go I now have two tabs. So when I'm preparing for my session and I'm trying to take some test photos I use imaging. Once I've set the sequence going I can monitor that sequence uh, in this window here. So I, I just find that an easier way to do things. And the only other things that you need to do are get to these tabs across the bottom so, for example, uh, I have plate solving as one of those. I also have manual focus targets, as you see them appearing down the bottom. I then have my autofocus tab and I have my image history. So now between this and the image, I could, if obviously if that was a light frame, I could plate solve that. Um, I can pick a list of manual focus targets. Uh, that sometimes helps just almost like the three star alignment. It really helps just get the telescope uh, into the right position or obviously if I do want to use a back knob mask for example instead of my autofocus I could also or if I'm having issues with the autofocus it's just a backup there and the autofocus you could you can run that from there and my image history obviously during a night this just contains all of your different images so that's pretty much all there is to your settings and, and getting that 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 page the way you want it obviously that's only the way I like to use it so you know don't, don't feel you have to use it the way I do uh, you will find there are certain things with the Nina that you use more than others and you'll find the ones that work well being on one side or at the bottom and it's just something that you get to play with and, and work out what works for you there is no right or wrong to that so I hope you found that video useful. In the next video, we are going to move on to the Sky Atlas. So this is how we can use the Sky Atlas in order to find our target, find the information out, or even help Nina tell us what the best target is for us on that particular night. So we'll cover that in the next video. But until then, clear skies.